Hello everyone, Tracking Pat again, and this time we're going to be talking about doing AGE profile in the RMX. And although the AGE basically works the same way as you've seen it in other features and other controls, because of the touchscreen it's become much more simplified and easier to understand, and therefore it's actually more powerful as well. So to get started, I'm at the home screen like I usually am, and I'm going to go to the program mode. And again, I want to remind you, I'm using my mouse because of the demonstration in the television. But everywhere you see my mouse click, that would be your fingertips. Okay, so I'm going to tell it that this is an AGE profile. And then I'm just going to push go to begin, okay? So on the part that I have here in my print, there's quite a few missing dimensions on here. And I'm going to explain how the different values work in AG and how to make something like this come out to make this pocket. The one rule about an AGE pocket as opposed to a profile would be that it has to start and finish at the same place. This is actually a profile so it wouldn't matter even though it's going to do the same. Okay, so I'm going to go to profile. I'm going to go to irregular which automatically puts me in AGE and it's asking me for a starting point. So from my lower left hand corner is where my zero zero is. So I'm just going to start out with that information first. Put in a depth. And I'm going to tell it that I'm climb milling in this case. I'm using two passes. I want to leave a finish cut at 10 thousandths. Throw in some RPMs. And some feed rates that really don't matter for what we're doing right now. Okay. So once I finish that first page, now what I'm going to do is start describing the geometry. So if you look at the print here, it shows me that the first thing I'm going to do is a straight line. So I gave the beginning points a zero, zero. Now I'm moving to two inches and zero. And at that point, you're going to see up here that you have an OK light. OK, so it says, all right, I'm good here. It does have some other questions unanswered here. And the reason for them is, first of all, I can add a Conrad at any intersection if I need to. In this case, I don't have one. And then if I didn't know the X and Y end, I could describe how to get there by giving the length and the angle or either or with a little bit of help to have the machine use the AG to figure it out for me. In this case, because it's complete, I'm just going to swipe forward and then I'm going to go to the next milling event. Okay. Now when you look at the print here with the milling event, you're going to see that they tell you a few things, but they don't tell you everything you need to know. First of all, it's asking me, is this event tangent to the previous? Two lines cannot be tangent to one another. Therefore, the answer is no. So just hit the absolute key. Your X end is not on the print and either is your Y end. Okay. So therefore, I'm going to leave these blank. However, I'm going to use the feature that they call guess. And the great thing about guess is that I can actually take my part here and I can just come up here with my finger and just touch a point and say enter. And it's going to draw a fictional line right now to say, OK, it's somewhere around here. What else can you tell me? So there is no Conrad. So I'm going to leave that blank. And I don't know the length of the line. But what I do know is that the line itself is at a 45 degree angle. OK, so I'm going to punch in here 45 degrees, hit my enter key. And the line is going to stay as a dotted line because there's not enough information yet. If I split my screen here, you're going to see that it still says not OK, right? So it's saying, all right, what are you going to do next? So I'm going to go to the next milling event. And in here, I'm going to do a little bit more description. But first of all, it's not tangent either. And I don't know exactly all the information that I need to do this. What I do know is I do have the ending points for this, OK? So my ending points are 8 inches in, uh, in the x-axis and 0 in the y-axis. And there's no Conrad. But now here's where I'm going to use the information on my print. So if you look at my print, at the end of this line, it's showing me a 30 degree, 30 degree angle. The problem with that is that that angle does not come from zero because my line's actually coming from the opposite end and going to end up there where that point of reference is. So I'm going to explain to you by using the EPA what they're actually looking for. So if I go to the EPA window and it opens up in here and I go to AGE, you're going to see it starts out with a video, OK? I'm going to skip the video part. I'm just going to move forward to where I get to where it describes angles. And in angles, if you notice here, it's showing me that on a degree wheel, any line that I'm trying to describe, the beginning of my line is the center of my degree wheel. If I go directly to the right or at 3 o'clock, that is 0 degrees. And if I go counterclockwise in direction, I'm going positive degrees. What the prototrack wants to know is a positive degree angle from beginning to end. So if you look at our print where it says 30 degrees, that would be right about here where my arrow is showing you. And that's actually 330 degrees if I start at zero and go all the way around to that point. So that's what the prototrack is looking for. So I'm going to close this window 
And in here where it says line angle, I'm just gonna put 330 degrees, okay? And you'll notice at that point that this went to okay and all of this is solid lines again, right? So now you kind of have an idea on how angles work. Now I'm gonna give you a little bit more information. So I'm gonna to go to my next milling event. And in this case, it's telling me the ending point for it, okay? So I come in here and it says, not tangent. I tell it that it's another inch, so I can use either one inch incremental or I can use the nine inches absolute and the Y dimension is missing. So again, when I'm missing a dimension, I'm gonna hit guess. I'm gonna click somewhere up here about where I think it is, push enter. And then it says, what else can you tell me? There's no Conrad in here. Um, the other thing that I actually know this time is the length of the line. My print is showing me it's two and a half inches long. And as long as I have one dimension and an angle or one dimension and, uh, and another given point in a guess, it'll figure it out because it's do, doing the math basically of a triangle by itself, okay? So you notice it's here already and it's asking me, what do I want to do next? So I'm going to do a milling event. So I'm going to swipe forward and select mill. And this time there's uh, no difference in the x-axis. So I'm going to leave that where it is. I'm just going to use incremental for that. And then it's asking me what my Y dimension is. And my Y dimension is five inches. It shows it on the print. So I'm gonna to go to five inches, okay? And I got my okay again. So again, I can just swipe forward. If I'm using my mouse, I have to just left click and swing the mouse over. If I'm using my fingers, I would just swipe normally. Okay, now I've got an arc. So this is where it starts getting interesting. So I've got an arc, it is tangent, okay? So in order to be tangent, I just click the button or tap it with my finger, hit my absolute button. Now it's asking me direction of the arc, which I can enter one or two, or I can use the drop down menu. In this case, it's counterclockwise, right? So I'm going to say two, and then it's asking me my ending points. Again, I don't know them, so I'm going to use the guess feature, tell it it's somewhere around here, and enter. Then I'm going to tell it what I do know. My center points of my, uh, of my arc are actually here on my print, so it looks like the X center is seven inches and the Y center is five inches, both in absolute. There's no Conrad. And the rest of these questions are to help describe the geometry. So the only other thing I know that's on my print is that this is a two inch radius. So even though it says not okay yet, I'm gonna swipe forward. And you'll see that it leaves a dotted line needing more information. So here I'm gonna to go to the next arc and it is also tangent. So I'm gonna click my on button, hit absolute. And the direction of this one is clockwise, so I'm gonna hit absolute again. And again, my ending points I don't know. So I'm gonna to go to guess, I'm gonna select somewhere over here, push enter, and move on to the centers of the arc. Now in this case, they didn't even give me the centers of this one. But what they did give me again was the radius. So I'm gonna go right to the radius, put in my two and a half inch radius, and I'm gonna swipe forward again. So now I've got two events that are not okay. Notice it looks pretty funny right now. Don't worry about that just yet. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is go to my next arc. And in this arc, it's also tangent, okay? So I'm gonna click the button, hit absolute, switch this to counterclockwise, and then go to my ending points, okay? My ending points are not on here again. So I'm gonna to go to guess, and I'm gonna click over here about where it's at, okay? So it's about there, enter my guess point. And then at this point, it wants the centers. The centers are zero and five inches. Okay, and there's no Conrad. The radius is two inches again. Okay, and you notice it's starting to figure it all out. See that on the screen? So here it's, I only have one event that's not correct yet, and I don't have enough information to give that to it yet, so I'm gonna swipe forward. Sometimes with the mouse it doesn't swipe as nice as your finger, just so you know. I've got a milling event left. I go to the milling event, it is also tangent. So I select tangent, hit absolute. My X end is zero and my Y end is zero. And at that point you see everything here is okay. And the last thing I would do is swipe forward and then push end AGE. And you'll notice when I bring this all back here, that my part is completed with all the geometry that was missing on that print. It is 100% correct and ready to go and set up my tooling and then finish the job. So this gives you an idea what the power of AGE is, but with the touch screen, it's even more powerful because now it's so fast to just be able to guess and say, I know this, I don't know this. Give it what you know, leave out what you don't, and before you know it, you'll have a part finished faster than you could turn on your CAD CAM system, no matter how difficult that geometry is. I hope this is also beneficial to you. Again, I'm tracking Pat, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. 
Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat, and if you enjoyed this last video, don't forget to smash the like button, leave a comment, follow along with us. If you want to see the next video, just check this one out over here. And otherwise, don't forget to subscribe so you can learn more about us. I'm Tracking Pat, and don't forget to keep on tracking.